Okay, so this is going to be a demonstration of FlowGen. This is a project I've been working on uh, for procedurally generating uh, assets of, of whatever kind you need. Uh, right now, it works primarily with text. Um, I've already got uh, some methods in place for working with images and with terrain maps, uh, but I uh, they're not like... This whole thing is still in... Uh, um, prototype mode so there's still a few bugs and like things here and there so I don't want to show you the 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 more advanced uh, terrain and image uh, and sprite sheet stuff because um, I, I, I there's still bugs with it but I, I, I do want to take uh, but I did want to like kind of like show everybody the um, the text generation part of it which is kind of cool so uh, this is a a, um, a uh, flowchart based uh, procedural generation uh, engine and uh, you sit it around and you you uh, make uh, flow charts uh, with like uh, decisions like um, you know what is it you know and it can be and then you can go and be like you can be like uh, add a it's a box box or a um, you know like a ball and then you can take those things and you can connect them again to like other stuff like another decision color and then add attribute. And uh, is ball. And let's make a description. Let me make some colors. Let's make a red. And a blue. And uh, Export node. That's export. Uh, uh, gener a, uh, uh, a color type. And export to. to a termination node and 
command so that's that's so that's generating it uh, and then we can run the whole thing and red it's a ball it's red and then if I go open up the output file generated a red ball so that's how it works uh, and then I'll show you some demonstration on some of the uh, more advanced features by showing you a script that I have already worked on called enemy dot uh, uh, this is not like for really for a game yet this is just for testing various features uh, but this one shows uh, a bunch of stuff so so first of all there is the sprint that I just showed and that runs through the flowchart as fast as it can and creates the app thing and does all the exports and all that stuff. So in this one it says, oh no, a goblin carrying a huge axe. Not a problem. It's got 39 hit points. It's level 7 and it's a goblin. And I can sprint over and over again. And it'll give me a different one each time. Or, you know, it'll give me a one each time. Oh, the, oh, the animals. Uh, so the animal. Uh, it actually, not a specific type of animal, it, it creates the name randomly. It's a Ming Ray. So, I don't know, maybe that was a good or bad. My codex for animal names is only about a thousand animal names long, maybe. Uh, maybe not even that. So, it may not be the best. It's Sona. It's a Sona. So, there's Sprint. After Sprint, there's Run. Run is practically identical to Sprint, except it goes slower, so you can watch it faster, so you can watch it better. Uh, and then, and in addition, after Run, the next fastest one is Step. This is where you manually step through each step, and the decisions are made randomly. And then finally, there is Crawl. And at Crawl, when you get to a decision, it asks you to make the decision for it. And that way you can test even like low likelihood uh, situations without having to, to, you know what I mean? And then if I want to remake a decision because something happened, I can set it active and then step, step. Yes, yes, it's set. But now that it's gone through animals, got the type animal, so this weight will be more likely to be prevalent so I don't have to crawl through it, but I could crawl through it or I could step through it. I can switch between crawling and stepping at any particular thing and when you go to it when you when you go to a, uh, a node and it goes into a, uh, into a decision uh, what it shows here is uh, well this will have to be updated I'm gonna try to th this currently shows the ID for the element which is meaningless to the user I'm gonna try to uh, map this to like a numeric one th so whether it's the first choice second choice or third choice but this is the text of the connection so this one it says trivial easy the the text here determines this text and then this calculation after after calculating this value is what's in the bra braces uh, the brackets uh, so that's um, so you can see how how it would have been calculated and if you wanted to follow like the most likely choice you could or if you wanted to make a specific choice you could uh, so there's the sprint run step crawl there's a uh, start decision manipulate export terminate nodes you can uh, if you do tra trail active node and you do step it'll follow along so you can see every step and so that that's uh, over here you can you can uh, add you should be able to add uh, yeah add um, arbitrary attributes like um, I don't know Aim bomb. Well, uh, that was outside of a thing. So, so now if I uh, green, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, you just add um, and this could be string. It could be uh, numeric. It could be all that kind of stuff. All that great stuff. And uh, in, and then the the uh, so there's the start node, and then at the start node you can, you can read input from an input text file, and that'll do the same thing that uh, setting these attributes here. So if I set an attribute to goblin, 
now when I run this uh, the goblin will be have a uh, weight of 10,500 so it'll practic it'll make goblins like practically every time let's try it and actually I'll stop trailing the active node for run I don't I like it for the stepping and the crawling I, I'm not 100% sure I like it for the running and the sprinting but so let's say it makes a goblin every time and if I take that out it'll make it something different it might still make a goblin but oh it's a blue dragon they are nice he's on the same side as me 272 hit points and he's level 50 um, so there's, that's the start node, starting attributes, uh, can be numeric as well. Um, and then there's the decision node. These are all, uh, calculated weights. Uh, the only special terminologies here is these, uh, braces for if this attribute equals this value, then it evaluates to one. And if it doesn't, it evaluates to zero. Um, in addition, um, as you see in this decision note over here, if you want to access a numeric uh, attribute, you don't need to put the braces around it. Only the the braces are only for so uh, if you if you access a if if you, the, the 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 brackets only were the one zero for if that value equals that string value. It's the only string operation that the weights can uh, accomplish, but. If you're using the numeric attribute values, you don't have to put braces around it. It'll just, uh, so so this will calculate as uh, 272 less than 30, that'll be a zero. Um, uh, so there's the manipulation, then there's the decisions, and then after the decisions, there's the manipulations, which uh, at the core has a uh, Lua function uh, that um, that is called, uh, but in addition, you can add quick attributes uh, quick attributes is like you, you add the attribute and the name of it and then if you add a tilde it means it's a mathematical expression so it's going to be calculated into a numeric value if you um, add a if, if you use a, a, a plus it means it's an appending of a text uh, plus means append with a space hyphen means append with no space um, and if you don't use a modifier it just replaces the text value altogether uh it could be boolean um it could be uh it, it, all sorts of things so then in here in inside a lua function you have access to a string manipulator and uh a uh calculator uh that includes uh dungeons and dragons styled um random uh terminologies and uh, I will add a, I will be adding a map manipulator, which will work on two-dimensional arrays or three-dimensional arrays or five-dimensional, or just work on arrays. And then a sprite manipulator, which will work on sprite atlases and images in order to layer sprites and colorize them and stuff like that. I haven't actually fully implemented those, so they're not in here yet, but, uh, but like... If so, description ah, it's a red dragon and it's going to burn us alive is functionally identical to um, object description equals uh, etc. So that's just a quick shortcut so you don't have to write a Lua function for every single thing, but you can do other stuff like, for example, I think the animal had an example of having more stuff. So, yeah, so animal generate a name description is uh, and then the string manager manipulate that it's an animal uh, so th and then the export is a uh, data merge into a text file and then terminate uh, and this is not implemented yet but it will export it into a uh, binary format um, additionally I'm going to have um, like uh, a different type of uh, terminate I haven't quite decided the name of it yet but it'll t basically be like an early termination so like if I wanted to create 
um, only so so let's say I wanted to create some some random creature but I didn't want all those creatures to be identical I wanted it to be like a class of creature so I might run it once and it might stop here at goblin and then terminate here at this special terminator that would tell it so that when it ran when it opened that thing it would have to continue from this spot on so that when you opened it like you would say you would you would you would say uh this area has goblins and then to generate the specific goblin it would start here and then finish up the rest of it and say so that each goblin that was made was different and then so goblins are kind of have a cool thing going on with them because like at first it chose chooses a goblin and it chooses a level between one and two and it's just a basic goblin and then it decides oh is it armed and if it isn't armed it doesn't it says oh it's luckily it's not armed but if it has a sword it says oh that's additional three levels a, a, a goblin with a sword is higher level than a goblin with no sword and a goblin with an axe is a higher level even than the goblin with the sword and then that way uh when we get here we base hit points on level not on uh the specific thing and um and so on and so forth and and then these uh flow charts can continuously and i'm going to add another type of node that will call a uh, another script to generate an object so like instead so when it says armed instead of saying no it's not armed it would say no it's not armed or yes it is armed and it's armed with this weapon and it would call a weapon generation script with the input that it's a creating a weapon for a goblin and so on and so forth and then and then that way you you can have like really really intricate really well connected uh, and consistent um i like the idea is just consistent everything hopefully um or as much consistency as possible at the very least and eventually we're gonna have like map templates and uh sprite manipulators and all sorts of things of and fun things so but that's that's it um thank you bye bye oh stop recording <laughs>